Well, the thing is, your ass is being rejected for business loan all the time. And you kind of realize, oh, hey, wait a minute. What's going on here? Well, in today's conversation, what I want to do, I want to, re- to tell you, I want to, re- I want to reveal to you huge business loan without income proof, the five big errors that sink your approval chances big time. We're talking big time. So don't you go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sort of Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you are to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka, and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to share with you huge business loan without income proof. We are talking about the five large errors that sink your approval chances big time. The first thing is not shopping around. That's the first mistake not shopping around it's really important if you are looking for a huge business loan guess what boss i want you to sit down and look at a uh, i would say a constellation of uh, lenders okay because if you're not shopping around for prospective lenders you are leaving literally a lot of money on the table a lot of cash on the table because shopping around for lenders can result in a lower interest rate and a lower repayment amount over the loan period so do not underestimate that boss i'm talking to you directly because you know we see a lot of uh, viewers and a lot of uh, people actually saying hey listen i'm just i just i wanted a huge loan and um, i just went to this particular lender hey hey no no you want to shop around you want to and you want to specifically look for lenders that offer something called soft pool okay so that you can protect you can preserve your your credit you don't want to have hard pools over hard over hard pools over hard pools no when you when we are talking about huge business loan without income proof we are talking about alternative lenders and most of those lenders they charge a high APR. So you want to be very, very careful, okay? So sh- not shopping around for prospective lenders is a big mistake. Applying for multiple loans. So basically, you're just applying for one loan here, one loan there, or another loan there. That's, that's really bad too. Remember, the whole thing is to preserve your FICO score and to, pre- to preserve your credit worthiness. So don't you go around and, and apply for multiple loans simultaneously. You can apply for one, and if it doesn't work, you just uh, steady the, the reasons for denial, okay? And then you, and if you really need the cash really fast, you can wait for 30 days and apply for another one. But I, we do not recommend, based on our research, that you just apply for two or three or four lenders simultaneously. That's really bad, okay? And when you think about those loans, do not only compare cost. Because when we think about a loan, a business loan, there are a lot of uh, things that go into, uh, that you have to take into account. Customer service the the cost of the fee okay the the apr the origination fee if there is a prepayment fee the, here is a constellation of things that you have to think about okay big decision time boss i want you to answer me right now are you shopping around for your next business loan without income proof or are you just going to one lender or you going to one broker you need to shop around shop shop and shop around mistake number two not reviewing your credit scores and when we talk about credit scores here we are speaking about two things okay there is a duality to to consider your personal credit score and your business credit score it's it's important let's first start with your personal credit score well the thing is a lot of people say you know when you ask them what is your credit score well i think i'm like uh, around 600 or 700 or 650 whatever see they have no clear idea so i'm telling you Mother, if you listen to me, sister, if you listen to me, brother, if you listen to me, father, if you listen to me. The thing is today you need to be you need to be very serious about your credit score. And I want you to have clarity around that number. I'm not asking you to tell me it is it, it is it is nearly a 700 or it is, it is about 690. No, I want you to tell me, "Hey, hey, hey, 8685." You have to be certain. And how do you do that? Check your credit reports. Go to annualcreditreports.com, okay? Because disregarding your personal credit score is really bad. It's a really, it's a serious mistake. 
especially when we talk about huge business loans without income proof. Why? Because those loans, if you don't want to provide it proof of income, the lender is going to pay attention to other criteria, including your personal FICO score. Okay. And it's important to understand that you want to have a number that is as accurate as possible. Go to websites such as annualcreditreport.com, go to Credit Karma, sign up with Credit Karma, Nerd Wallet. Okay. You can go to Wallet Hub and go to uh, Discover Credit Wise. You can go to Capital One Credit, Credit Wise. There are a lot of uh, free platforms out there to help you get a good, a proper understanding of your credit standing. It's a really, really important and do not underestimate that. Okay. And the thing here is that if you have a huge business loan without income proof, the consequences of uh, not having the proper FICO scores can be substantial. Why? Because you imagine you have a, you receive five years and they give you a, an APR of 17.99%. Whereas if you had a, if you have the proper, if you had the proper FICO score, they might have given you an APR of 13.99%. Well, 13.99, the Delta here, 17.99 to 13.99%. The Delta is huge, especially if we were talking about a huge business loan without income proof. Okay. So money, 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 money. What I'm trying to, what I want you to do right now is to go and start checking your credit score before even thinking about applying for a huge business loan without income proof. And when we talk about now reviewing your credit scores, as I said before, the second leg of that uh, equation is what? Your business credit scores. This is important also. Okay, so when we talk about your business credit scores, we are speaking about, principally, we are speaking about three things, three scores. If you can't get the three, just get at least one. Try to have your business's Paydex score. So you have Paydex that comes from Dun & Bradstreet. That's one. The second one is Experian Business. And the third one is uh, Equifax. Okay. This is the trifecta that governs the business credit field. I mean, there are others, but uh, those are the three principal ones. The thing here is that when we talk about business credit, first of all, you need to establish your business credit. Do you have business credit, boss? Cuz I'm talking to you. You know, let's not just uh, let's be real here. Let's be real. Do you have business credit? And what is your business credit score? Have you contacted? First of all, do you even have a, a Dunn's number? That's a number you got to get with the Dunn and Bradstreet. That's the fundamental thing. This is the primordial thing you need to start with. Okay, if you don't have that, then uh, conversations are over. Okay. No more conversation with you. So I want you to really right now, I want you to get your ass and start and register with Dun and Bradstreet and get your Dunn's number. Okay. That's the first thing. And once you do that, you have to get the right. I mean, this, this is not a course about establishing business credit, but you know the drill, right? You got to have a, you got to have your net 30 vendors. We have covered this on other shows. You got to have your net. So first have your Dun's number. You got to have your net 30 vendors. This is important. You got to have your business credit cards and whatnot. You got to get loans and you got to, Stop, start establishing business credit. But the thing is, if you have business credit, it is important that you contact the agencies where you have credits so you have a better idea of your credit score even before you apply for a huge, a large business loan without income proof because the lender is going to find out anyway. So why not finding out yourself first? So you can, you can, you can strategically decide if this is the right time to apply or not. See, the thing is, a lot of people are just stingy about, hey, you know, I'm not spending $100 on, on uh, checking my credit score. I'm not spending $75 or $200. But, boss, you are applying for a $100,000 business loan without income proof. And you're telling me you can't even uh, spend, you can't even spare $500? Come on, man. So those are things you have to think about, okay? Those are things you have to think about because the bottom line is you want to have the right the right uh, proper, the, the right data. So mistake number one, huge mistake number one, not shopping around. Mistake number two, not reviewing your credit scores. Mistake number three, falsifying financial data. Oh yeah, boy, you don't want to do that. You know, when we talk about business loan application, I don't care if it's with or without, without income, you never ever want to, fal to falsify 
financial information. You never want to uh, submit, you know, data that is wrong or that is intentionally wrong. This is really good. I mean, this is really bad because if a borrower is detected lying on a loan application before it's approved, the lender can reject the application completely. Okay. So by faking financial information, you are committing a crime known as loan application fraud. And don't take, don't take this lightly because the FBI is going to come and knock on your door at 4 a.m. because, hey, listen, you just lie. You just lie on a loan application. Nobody wants that. You don't want it. I don't want it. Nobody wants that. Okay, so you want to avoid exaggerating your earnings in the hopes of receiving a good deal. Okay, loan application fraud is a serious offense, very serious, that comes with severe consequences. Okay, this is really something you need to really avoid 100%. Because if you are ever found guilty of uh, that offense, guess what? You could face prosecution and worse at all, worse of all, imprisonment, jail time. Nobody wants that. So the bottom line is that when you are applying for a, a business, a huge business loan, I mean, not even huge, just a regular business loan, any type of loan for that matter, any type of loan, whether it is a business loan, personal loan, you don't want to fudge your financial information. No. I mean, you know, it might look uh, interesting. In, let's say you are earning, let's say uh, your business is earning 50 grand a year and you want to put 75 grand a year. It might look good on paper. Yeah. But boss. This is a bad path to take, okay? Because the lender will find out anyway at some point. Why? Because they will start looking at your, your cash flows. Follow the money. Because if you're making $75,000 but your bank deposits do not substantiate that, people will start asking questions. Yeah, they will start ask, asking questions. Why this applicant telling me, hey, listen, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing in $75,000, but uh, his or her bank deposits average uh, 3,000 every month or average 1,000 every month. See, the thing is, so it's really not worth it. You want to take it from a former CPA, former auditor. You really don't want to do it, okay? Because you can try cash really easily. You can lie on your income, that's for sure, but you cannot lie on your cash position, okay? So big decision time, boss. Big decision time. Next time, are you currently applying for a loan? Okay. Do you have the data, the right data? Because sometimes people can falsify financial information because they don't have they don't have the proof but don't do anything intentional okay mistakes happen here and there but hey listen there's a difference between uh i would say uh light negligence and gross negligence and fraud so when we talk about falsifying financial data there's another, so there's another aspect of it. It is failure to provide a solid business plan. Oh yeah, we see this all the time. If you want to get, if you want to get a huge business loan without income proof, boss, I'm telling you right now, you want to get a solid, a compelling business plan. A lot of people just underestimate the power of a business plan in a business loan application process. This is so powerful. Why? Because of a, uh, there's a trifecta in a business loan. In a business and in a business plan, there is a trifecta. What is that? A business plan talks about where your business has been, where it is currently, and where it intends to go in the future. See, we have the the uh, the the junction, if you will, between the past, the present, and the future. And this is what a business plan does wonderfully. And if you're able to write a business plan that sort of captures the essence of your business from the past to the present to the future, whoo, you're going to get the loan you need, boss. You're going to get it. But the, the thing is, if you have no knack, no ability to write a business plan, you have no knack for writing financial uh, literature, that's fine. Listen, nobody can, no, nobody is, uh, is talented in everything. Hire someone, hire someone get the best of the best and the thing is it's, it's it's relatively affordable we're not talking about uh you know something that breaks the bank no we're talking about two hundred dollars one hundred dollars three hundred dollars to get a solid business plan go on websites such as fiverr freelance freelancer.com upwork top tail okay you can do that or you can actually use a business plan software they are they're affordable you can actually hire somebody locally to, to write the plan for you. But the thing is, you want to have a readable, a portable, a potent business plan. Don't you give me a cheap ass business loan that uh, that comes from a 
from a, a template that you downloaded on uh, www.xyz.com and you just download you just downloaded the, the template and just customize it and you give me a you give me a cheap ass uh, business business uh, plan no I don't want to read that. I don't want to read that. And neither does the lender. The lender wants to read something portable from you, something potent, something powerful, something that really encapsulates the trends in your industry, boss. That's what we're talking about. All right. Those are things we're talking about. So you want to have someone that really. So because the business plan will detail your business goals and will lay out financial data. And it's important. We'll also talk about the, uh, the, the trends in your industry. Okay, your SWOT analysis, something called strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Those are important to sort of gauge what's really happening in the industry. Okay, failure to provide a solid business plan, it's really a mistake. So number three, falsifying financial data, either through the financial statements themselves or through your business plan. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation today about a huge business loan without income proof. And I'm giving you the five big errors you need to avoid the next time you apply for a loan. Error number four, not evaluating your repayment capacity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So failing to evaluate your own repayment capacity is a great, great, great deterrent. It's a great error. Why? Because the thing here is that your business basically makes money, right? Generates revenue. So every month you do your, your, your analysis, your income statements, your cash flow statements, and whatnot. You analyze what, what comes in, what goes out. Okay, pretty, pretty basic. But the thing is that if you, are, if you want to take out a loan, you got to think about the impact of that loan on your, uh, on your cash flows. Because you're going to lose, you're going to use the loan for it something so the money is not going it's not going to stay in the business you probably want to use the loan for expansion you want to use the loan for uh, for uh, for inventory for uh, to pay suppliers to for, for for payroll and whatnot so the loan the money coming from the loan the loan proceeds will not be static they will be spent right away or gradually over time so the bottom line is you need to have additional cash to be able to repay that loan okay so you yourself you need to assess your own repayment capacity and uh, this is where one thing that's very important one term one criterion it's, it's important to know dti your debt to income ratio so this is a, a number this is a metric that refers to the proportions of your monthly payments to your gross monthly income okay so this is a criterion used by banks and financial institutions and alternative lenders to evaluate an individual's repayment capacity okay so the lender will basically sum up all of your monthly loan payments as well as certain other financial responsibilities that your company has and and we tell uh, viewers Generally, to have a DTI of 30 to to 40 percent, the sweet spot is 33 percent. One third of your of your uh, income should be spent, should be allocated to debt servicing. Okay, anything beyond that, you are in bad territory. Okay, in other words, you really want to really manage your liquidity. Very important. Money, 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 boss. So the thing here is, I want you right now to write down your to write down to calculate your DTI. This is your homework right now. Right now, after this after this video, I want you to sit down and just write down write down all your expenses and all your income and divide your uh, expenses, your debt servicing rather, by your income to try to try to find your DTI. <laughs> So when we talk about not evaluating your repayment capacity, we are talking, of course, about your own repayment capacity. But also, you need to prove to the lender that you can pay back the loan. See, this goes both ways. OK, first, you have to prove to yourself that, hey, listen, I, I think I'm fine. I, 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 I'm, I'm definitely fine. But you have to prove it to a, another party. That's the lender, because the lender wants to see that you're that you are able to that your business is able to generate the revenue, the income, the cash flow needed to repay the loan. Now, 
there are a lot of ways you can do that. First of all, you can you can do this through uh, your DTI. I mentioned that before. That's your debt to income ratio. So you're able to show the lender, hey, listen, here is my DTI before the loan. My DTI is 30%. And here is my DTI before uh, after the loan. My DTI will be 35%. So I'm still in a healthy, quote unquote, healthy category. That's one way of doing it. The second way of doing it is, is to show the lender your statement of cash flows. So you can have uh, your actual statement of cash flows and you can have a pro forma statement of cash flows. In other words, you are you are anticipating the loan and what effect the loan will have on your cash inflows and cash outflows. Normally, when you have a, a statement of cash flows, the loan will go in a category called cash inflows from financing activities. OK, just for those of you who are a little um, a little lost right now. So when we talk about a statement of cash flows, we are talking about three categories. Cash flows from uh, operating activities, cash flows from uh, financing activities, and cash flows from investing activities. And a loan will go into the cash flows from financing activities, okay? And the thing here is, so there's a second way of showing this. So you wanna show that even after paying the loan, you are generating positive cash flows at the end of the month, okay? Another way of showing the lender that you actually have the capacity to prove to pay the loan back is by showing your pro forma income statements in other words you're showing them that you can generate enough revenue enough income to be able to cover not only the debts that you just uh, you are just uh, contracting but also to generate enough um, free capital to be able to take care of any uh, contingency and things happen you know if you have a business you're going to have contingencies anyway so the bottom line is we want to be you want to be really really you want to be uh, assertive in explaining to the lender hey listen I can pay this. I got this. Okay. You don't have to worry about anything. Right now, I need the money for expansion. I need the money for something else, but I am do I'm totally fine. The business is a booming and we're going to take care of you. Mystic number five, not explaining the use of loan proceeds. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here is the context. You are applying for a huge business loan without income proof. Okay. You don't have uh, you don't have proof of income okay but have you explained how you're going to use the money what are you going to use the money for first of all use of loan proceeds is a regulatory requirement in other words the uh, authorities want to make sure that in in, in um, like they're trying to prevent money laundering so the thing is you need to explain what you need the money for okay and and this is part of uh, something called um, aml Anti money laundering, any money laundering, and this is something that's very big with the financial institutions in general. And this is also part of the KYC process that know your uh, customer, know your client's procedures. Okay. And so when we talk about not explaining the use of loan proceeds, it has a lot of uh, components to it. First of all, some people ask for too much or too little. In other words, they are just uh, doing their analysis. And this is very because this is very much the, the result of not properly planning stuff you're just waking up one day oh i, I need a uh, one hundred thousand dollars okay I, I i need i need to get this no no boss you take your time you analyze things you write things down you meet with your with your staff or you meet with yourself or whatever the, the size of your company is you want to sit down and you say listen i need one hundred thousand dollars because of this and this and this and the here is how i'm going to repay the loan so you never ask for too much or too little because you have thought thing, you have thought things through. You have analyzed the use of loan proceeds. Okay. And so let me ask you a question. Big decision time, big decision time. I want you to explain to me right now, if you are in the market for a business loan without income, have you thought about the use of loan proceeds? Are you uh, borrowing too much or too little? Those are questions I want you to answer. And no if buts and ands whatever no i want you to tell me are you are you sure of the loan amount that you have in your mind if you thought about everything else if you thought about the contextual the contextual framework that actually will have will uh, govern your loan your application in other words the money you're getting are you sure that you have thought about everything that will help you pay the money back and use the money properly so because failure to explain how you use the borrowed funds is a big turnoff for our lenders because they're, they're just thinking, hey, listen, here is an here is an amateur, somebody who has no idea, no idea what they need the money 
or they have little idea and nobody loves nobody likes people who have no idea people people love strong leaders people love people who are are assertive people know what they want and know how to get it all right boss this is the end of today's conversation i was talking to you about huge business loan without income proof and the five big mistakes you need to avoid if you want to uh, be uh, you want to be approved right away first not shopping around second not reviewing your credit scores third falsifying financial data fourth not evaluating your repayment capacity and fifth not explaining the use of loan proceeds thank you so much for your attention i will speak to you another time but until then remember stay marvelous